welcome back. Um, I had just mentioned uh, concrete versus abstract. Okay, I had posed the question um, that uh, that some of you might be uh, wanting to ask me right now, which is um, why it is that we're talking about we're just talking about images. We're just talking about detailed um, detailed particulars from the world, right? Hawks and bird baths, etc. Um, you know these these things that we see on an everyday basis, but we're trying to see in a more detailed, specific way, right? Why this is all interesting, but why are we talking about this when this is a poetry class, right? We're supposed to be talking about um, the emotions, uh, big big subjects, right? Big human mysteries, right? This is something that poetry. These are the things that poetry can talk about that uh, other forms of discourse cannot, right? Um, and you're right, you know. I mean, it is a little strange that we're doing this, um, and it comes down to the difference between concrete and abstract, okay? So um, concrete images are exactly what we've been talking about so far, right? And that's uh, the sensory details from the world, right? Um, particular things, things that you can see, smell, taste, touch, etc. These are the things that go into poems, concrete, concrete details. And you're going to see me writing that all over your poems or typing it all over your poems, right? More concrete details. Um, Unless you guys are awesome at it, and then maybe I won't, which would be great. Um, uh, abstract concepts, um, uh, by contrast, are basically ideas, right? Just that, concepts, okay? Um, emotions are abstract, okay? Uh, sadness, hope, love, joy, um, fear, desire, these are abstractions, okay? Um, they don't exist outside of the mind. I mean, they do, right, because you, you feel fear, right, and, and fear plays a huge role in everyday life. All these things do, um, but you can't touch it, right? You can't touch fear, right? You can't see fear. You can see things that scare you, right, and you can see concrete things that scare you, but you can't see fear, okay? And that's because these are abstract concepts, okay? Um, other abstract things, love, right, the concept of love, the concept of, of a god, Right or um, uh, some kind of higher being, right or um, uh, you know justice, um, liberty, freedom, right? These are abstract concepts, very very important concepts, right? But abstract nonetheless because we can't see them; they're not concrete. Okay. Um, the great paradox of poetry is that yes, poems are about the big things; they are about the big things, but we can't talk about the big abstract things. Um, without going through the concrete details, okay? Um, in order to get to the ideas, we have to talk about the things. Um, and this, is a, this was a famous dictum, a famous saying of the, uh, the great um, modernist American poet William Carr Williams. He said in one of his poems, a couple of his poems actually, he said, no ideas but in things. No ideas but in things. So um, we can't talk about ideas unless we're talking about them through things, okay? Um, which is kind of strange, you know? Um, but it's the way it works, right? So an example uh, is, is, let's take the biggest example of them all, love, right? Um, love, there have been millions of love poems written, right? Um, but the best love poems, and really I think any successful love poem probably won't have the word love in it, right? <laughs> you know, um, and uh, so you'll be talking about the abstract concepts, and it'll be clear to anyone who reads the poem that, oh, this is about love, right? But they'll be talking about concrete particulars. Right, because love itself is an empty word; it doesn't mean anything. Okay, um, uh, I mean, think about you know. I mean, of course, of course, it can mean a great deal, right? But the word itself has been denatured; it's been used so many times, right? That just you know, people throw it around like it's nothing, right? Um, poets; it's one of the poets' jobs, right, to give words back their meanings by concrete details, right? So instead of using the word love, I'm going to talk about the way that the sunlight hits um, uh, a, a lover's hair, right? Or blonde hair in the summer sunshine or something like that. Or um, the way a mother um, smiles when her baby boy rides a tricycle for the first time. Right? Um, or two uh, old people holding hands on a park bench, right? That's kind of a generic example. But you get the idea. These are concrete things that somehow um, connote, somehow um, give us the idea of love, right? Um, and they're so much more powerful than saying the word love, okay? Um, it's one of the great paradoxes of poetry, that the more concrete, the more 
um, particular, the, the newer, um, the fresher, the more detailed your concrete images are, the more able you are to talk about these big things. It's very strange. You know, you would think, oh, if I want to talk about love, I'm going to talk about love, generic things about love, you know. Um, I don't want to get too specific because then it won't apply to everyone, you know. No, that's completely wrong. It's, it's very strange. It's, it's that the, the more... Um, the more personal, you know, and, and personal, that doesn't mean it has to be about you, but, but it could be about anyone, right? Um, but the more, um, the more particular your, your concrete images are, for some reason, the more people they apply to. It's very strange. Um, it's, it's one of the wonderful things about poetry, right? And so we're going to be talking more about this. It's kind of a, a heady concept. Um, so if it's not quite clicking right now, don't worry about it. We'll be coming back. What I want you to understand right now is just the difference um, between concrete uh, and abstract images, okay? And um, uh, let me use an example from um, one of probably the best examples in all of you know modern poetry um, from Elizabeth Bishop that you read yesterday, okay? Um, page 33, Filling Station, okay? one of the great, great poems in the language. Um, so uh, we have the speaker of the poem. We always talk about the speaker of the poem, not necessarily the poet, because we don't know that the person... Um, in the poem is the poet himself or herself. Right? Um, so we have a speaker at uh, the filling station, at the gas station, right? Maybe they're just driving by or whatever. They see this uh, this site, right? Um, which is, uh, oh, but it is dirty, right? <laughs> it's filthy. Um, uh, oil soaked, oil permeated, disgusting, overall black translucency, okay? Um, fathers are wearing dirty, oil soaked monkey suits, right? You know, the monkey suits like the, the mechanic suit. Um, Thoroughly dirty. It has a cement porch behind the pumps, and on it, a set of crushed and grease impreg impregnated wickerwork. Okay, grease impregnated wickerwork. You know, you can see that. It's like you know, wicker chairs that have just been soaked with grease for years and years and years and years. And years. An extraordinarily detailed image. Okay, um, so she goes on, and the speaker goes on talking about these things. Um, there are some co comic books there that give a little bit of color, you know, which is nice. Um, they lie upon a big, dim doily, draping the tabouret uh, part of the set. Um, why the extraneous plant, the speaker asked. Why the tabouret? Why or why the doily? Right? Um, why in this disgusting <laughs> filling station is there this, uh, this big, dim doily? Right? Which is typically a, a kind of a dainty thing, right? It's, you know, it's sort of a clean thing. You know, this doily, it's what you use to um, protect a table, I think, right? You know, um, somebody embroidered the doily, okay? So, um, so the speaker realizes that, oh, someone had to embroider that, right? Um, somebody waters the plant, okay? Or oils it, maybe, right? Throws in a little joke here. Um, somebody arranges the rows of cans, another great detail here, so that they softly say, so, 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 so. Which is a really cool visual image, right? You, you have the um, the Esso can, which is a you know an oil company, right? Um, and that they're all in a line, right? And they're kind of turned, so you can only see the Esso, the Esso of the successive cans, right? Very great visual image here. Um, Esso, so so to high strung automobiles, and then here's where she makes the jump from the concrete to the abstract. Somebody loves us all. The only, she can only earn that statement, um, which is about love, about the idea of God, maybe about order in the universe, right? She can only earn that because she's, she's, um, she's sort of proven it to us with all of these uh, extraordinarily concrete images, right? Um, the contrasting of the doily, right, with this dirty place, right? The idea that someone had to have um, uh, sewn together or embroidered that doily, right, crocheted that. Um, there's something operating in the universe um, besides us. Okay. Um, that's one way to read the poem. There, this is sort of an, amb an ambiguous poem. There are a bunch of different readings. Um, but the point I want to get across is she makes the jump in the last line from the concrete, right, all these great images, to the abstract. Now, if she had just written a poem um, that uh, started with that, somebody loves us all, and let me tell you why somebody loves us all. Well, it's because of um, you know, people are nice to each other sometimes, and that's indicative of the fact, blah, 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 blah. It would become an essay, right? No. What makes it a poem is these concrete images, right? These fantastic, concrete images. Okay? 
Um, that's an example. Um, today you're going to be reading uh, three poems um, that all uh, take as their primary sort of subject or their primary viewpoint one image. You know, many poems are, are built just like Bishop's is of a bunch of different images. These are these are poems that kind of focus on one particular thing. Um, Charles Simic's poem looks at his shoes. Okay, it's actually an address. It's spoken to his shoes, um, and it's kind of uh, it's funny, you know, but it also shows you um, what can happen if you just focus on one you know, very quotidian, very everyday object, um, and to sort of endow it with your intention, okay? Attention, excuse me. Um, you're also going to be reading Sharon Old's um, The Glass, which is perhaps the grossest uh, uh, modern poem in the English language. Um, you'll see why. But again, focusing on the one particular image. Um, and and I would, I would um, suggest that she actually makes the image, this very gross image, as you'll see, quite beautiful by the end of it. Um, that's part of the abstract move there. Um, and then, uh, and then a poem by Mark Doty called um, Display of Mackerel, in which uh, the speaker goes to the grocery store and sees these fish laid out on ice, I think it is. Um, and so sees this beautiful image, describes the image. The image, um, this, this scene kind of does something to him, right, uh, to the speaker, and, and makes him sort of um, uh, go off on this kind of a little bit of a trip, right, we might say. Um, sort of an associative reverie. He goes, uh, he goes to some other places. Um, he's transformed by the imagination, um, and it's all sparked by this one image. This this great uh, detailed look at fish, right? And so uh, I think you'll enjoy that one as well. We'll be we'll be hanging with that poem a little bit um, tomorrow. You're going to read an essay by uh, uh, by Doty about that poem. Um, then today you're going to be completing your first exercise. Okay, daily assignment three um, is a creative writing exercise. Uh, it's going to be fun. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, you want to consider these as sort of practice for your poems, okay? Um, and uh, and since we're on the topic of your poems, your first poem is due this Friday, okay? It has to be turned in um, to me uh, and also posted on um, on the discussion page at Blackboard. So you have to do kind of two turn-ins there. You have to submit it to me um, on the course content site, right? And then you have to post it to Blackboard as well um, so your peers can comment on it. Um, please do that by 11.59, okay? Um, on Friday, right? Um, obviously, we haven't, you know, I mean, we've touched, we've talked about four temperaments, and we've talked about, you know, imagery, and we're going to talk about, or you, at least you're going to read about um, metaphor and simile tomorrow, right? So we don't have that much um, to go on when we're writing this poem necessarily. Um, I'm only going to be looking at really your use of, um, uh, of concrete imagery um, and, uh, and metaphor and simile. So um, the rest is just sort of up to you, you know, just have fun, um, pick any topic, anything that strikes you, or just start writing. And, and see what happens, um, and just pay attention to concrete imagery. Okay, um, we are uh, we're not going to have a video tomorrow. Okay, you're just going to be doing an assignment, doing some reading, reading some more poems. Okay, um, but you will have another video on uh, Friday. Okay, if you have questions um, as you're working on these poems, as you're doing an exercise for today, and then starting your your poems for Friday, um, please do not hesitate to send me an email. Okay, thanks guys. Have a good one.